Hi, Internet. I think I am live. Um, I did this goofy thing earlier today where I told some people I was going live at 6 and other people I was going live at 6.30. So um, if you're watching this from a future recording, I'm actually going to start the workshop at 6.30, which is 30 minutes from now. I'll put a timestamp in the description. Um, but anyway, I woke up this morning with some downloads, and so I figured I would use this opportunity to share some of those things. So for the first 30 minutes of this live stream, I'm just going to be talking about the energies that are coming in. And then in 30 minutes at 630 at the appointed time for our workshop, I'm going to get started into the Dumbledore's Army Workshop number one. So... Um, just as an intro, I am Z, Earth Star Healer. I am a uh, Andromedan Starseed. So many of you have heard me tell the story a bunch of times, but just for those of you who ha are new to this channel, um, I am what I would call a embodied Starseed. This is sort of a new concept slash new wave um, experience, meaning that the star seed mission has been going on for a few decades now, and many of the first waivers were born in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. And these beings, your job was to raise the frequency of the earth and hold space and bring in the codes so that eventually um, beings like myself would be able to incarnate. And so when I say embodied star, star seed, I really mean that I am accessing my soul to the point of experiencing my soul self in this human body on earth right now. And so in some ways, it does feel like um, being an alien in a human's body. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> but in another way, it really feels like um, when we are coming from this level of consciousness it really feels like all of life is connected and so it becomes not so much of a foreign experience and so I feel that my role here on earth right now is to um, be a role model for my fellow star seas to show you what is possible um, in our embodiment and what happens when we are fully embodied and on our mission um, so Back in Andromeda, I was a geneticist, and in the seventh density, geneticists are actually angels. <laughs> and um, a lot of people, when you think about the word angel, you think of this like fluffy, winged, smiling being who just sits in the corner of the room and just is constantly smiling at you. And um, it's kind of this two-dimensional image of this fun-loving being who's very soft, and um, that's it. So in actuality, angels are super intelligent, hyper beings in a higher dimension that um, understand the universe very scientifically. And when I say scientifically, I mean we understand it in a very deep and complex level to which point we actually begin to utilize the mechanics of the universe to co-create with it. And from the higher dimensions, when we feel such a burning love for life and all of creation. There's just such a deep reverence and being in loveness with creation itself that this leads our hearts um, into being curious about how the universe functions. And over billions of years, we begin to really understand the mechanics of the fabric of reality and begin to co-create with that. And so that is the science um, of genetics from a higher dimensional vantage point where genetics is really just the geometry and the backbone of the reality itself. So we talk about the fabric of reality, also then the fabric of these human bodies and the hologram or the expression of all of life in which the universe actually itself is a living being. And so the universe itself has a genetic code as well. It is hyper, super complex, and this is taking billions of years away. And so 
when I began to wake up to this aspect of myself back in 2013, in the beginning, um, I started perceiving reality in a different way of actually scanning the physical reality and seeing behind or into um, the energetic um, structures of reality itself. And from that place, um, my let's just say that even since the beginning of my awakening, um, I felt like I was on this journey to experience um, a bunch of things that eventually, because I had to go through them, that other people wouldn't have to. And things include becoming homeless, you know, being black magic, and um, exploring the world with no money at all, having just to completely trust the reality for years on end, driving across the continent, you know, time and time again, by myself in my little car, sleeping in the back of the car, doing these things so that I could gain skills and ways of perceiving that I can then bring back to my family so that I can share this library of experiences and knowledge with you. So when I was first waking up, um, I became homeless. And I knew that even though I was a muggle, and I will say that I wasn't always like this, <laughs> My journey did begin with me completely forgetting who I was. You know, the classic story of having been a very spiritual child and um, going to school, forgetting everything, and eventually becoming a very mundane Chinese girl who was, you know, good at school and played classical piano and um, didn't know anything about chakras. You know, I'm Chinese, but my parents don't even believe that Qigong is real. So I was really inside the matrix. So when I woke up, in 2013, I woke up to this voice in my head, literally asking me where I was from. And I was going to say China, but then instead, immediately I answered Andromeda. And that was the moment of my true starseed awakening. So when that happened, I started seeing visions of myself and having dreams of being on the ship, seeing all these different um, alien beings. <laughs> of all different colors and shapes. There's cats and dolphins, you know, um, all sorts of crazy beings in these light ships. And they would show me images of me having been a geneticist in the higher dimensions and how I meant to bring that awareness and that knowledge to the earth now. Um, and so I remember in 2015, I it's been two years of me being homeless and driving all over the place, getting all these downloads and just moving with the inspiration of spirit. So I, I finally sat down one day and I was like, okay, you guys keep telling me that I'm on some sort of mission. <laughs> so if I'm really on a mission, what sector of the mission am I on? And to my great surprise, they actually answered healthcare. <laughs> and I was really flabbergasted because I really wasn't expecting such a standard answer. And so I continued, I said, okay, then what's my job title? And uh, they said, self-healing guide. And so the following five years, I basically embarked on this journey of recognizing that um, I needed to pull my entire soul into this body. And when I first began to do that, I noticed that my physical body was just too dense for my true self to exist in it at all. <laughs> and so when this first started happening in 2015, I would feel my crown just wide open and I would feel like my consciousness was just one with the stars and I could communicate with my family. But it's like when I would do that, I always almost had to leave my body and I would almost freeze. And the rest of my body would just feel so heavy. And I would feel like this energy would only be able to come in my head. And then one year later, I noticed as I was checking in that when I was um, tuning in and connecting with my star essence, that then I felt the energy come down to my shoulders and I could kind of wave my head in higher dimensions, but my lower body was still, um, let's say, too dense for my spirit to incarnate inside of. And so this became very exciting to me because I realized that I was going through the process of incarnation all over again. And this is the process of the higher self walking that I feel that all of us are consistently 
I'm doing. Um, and so when I say that I'm an embodied star seed, when I first started this process, my guides told me that it would take seven years for me to fully walk into my body if that was my first and foremost priority. And I think that because a lot of us, you know, we have children, we have families, we have a career. Um, a lot of us couldn't just in our car and drive away into the quantum reality. And so in that way, I really felt like that was my mission was to jump fully in that um, as deeply as I possibly could to pull all of my essence into my body so that I can hold space for all of my starseed family to do this in a much quicker fashion. So um, I currently live in New Mexico um, in this beautiful land that my galactic predecessor actually acquired. And so I came to this land in 2015. And when I got here, this guy said that um, his best friend had bought this land in 20, a long time ago, and he died in 2013. And he told his friend that at some point, this little Chinese girl from Andromeda was going to come and this land was meant for her. And so, again, I feel like I live inside this reality now where even my house and my land came from this extraordinary situation of uh, my Andromedan team member who was here decades before me, <laughs> who purchased his land and left it for me and died before I even met him in the physical so, of course, I communicate, I, and I had been communicating with this um, being for years before I got here, so I knew exactly who it was that had left me in this land. So, all this is to say that I feel that my role now is having gotten so integrated into the fact that I am a starseed, and I have a multidimensional spirit that has knowledge and skills that I'm bringing to the earth at this time, um, I'm being called now to open up my energy, open source, to exchange and share this energy of integration with you. Um, and so for those of you who are here, I totally goofed. Um, and I told some people that I was going to start at 6 and other people I was going to start at 6.30. So the Dumbledore's Army Workshop is officially going to start at 6.30. And right now I'm just sharing little bits of intel that I received. So um, this morning I had this dream that this giant blue fairy came up and she just was hanging out. And then she said, the storm is beginning. And that I immediately woke up and obviously I knew what storm she was talking about because just last night, I was reading through some news articles and I found this one article that was this really horrible, sad story, basically um, about, um, you know, pedophilia. And the story was kind of popping out at me because I've never seen a story like this written in a big news uh, channel. It was very um, straightforward. It talked about the death of an infant that was sexually abused by a family member. And I don't recall ever seeing any news article about, you know, things like this. And so as soon as I read this article, I just, my heart dropped to way into the earth. And I realized that I was reacting to it in a way different way than if I was seeing, you know, just any one of my Facebook friends on Facebook screaming about mass pedophilia. And so it brought through this energy that we're going to talk about today. So the reason why the Andromedans got this land is because there is a cross-universal stargate that's being built. And stargates are places where cosmic energy enters the Earth. And as we go through our workshop today, we're going to have a better understanding of how that functions. But basically... Collective energies and timeline options come in through the gate, and usually I would be able to see them and also see where the collective is at in making major decisions. And of course, oftentimes there are galactic council meetings we have upstairs, I'm sure many of us are a part of, where we make collective decisions on um, if 
if their timeline and not anom anomalies, let's say. <clears throat> so when I read this news article last night, I realized that there was a big energy coming in for the disclosure of sex abuse. And this is actually a really big topic because I always say that our that sexual abuse is the basis and the foundation of planetary human enslavement on our planet and has been for a long time. And the reason why I say that is that sexual energy is how humans in these human bodies experience cosmic creative energy. And so in order to control the creative energy of divine creator beings, you would have to damage, degrade, and take away awareness of our sexual energy. And as we are all connected, if there are beings that are experiencing, especially beings as powerful and connected and innocent as children and infants, if they are experiencing extreme sexual abuse, that energy is experienced by humanity as a whole. And so disclosure of pedophilia is a very complicated thing that as the news are rolling out, us in the multidimensional realms, we have our jobs to do as well. So what I'm saying is that when I saw this article, I reacted in a much different way than if I was just reading one of my disclosure friends' posts about how blah, 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 and these people are pedophiles. You know, it's like almost like in our, in our community these days, it's almost like um, entertainment, you know. Oh, yeah, this is thing is happening, and this isn't going to come out, and these people are going to go to jail. And it's very disconnected and disintegrated in a way because it's almost speaking about it from this um, apart or separate kind of perspective. But when the news actually came out, you know, this about this child that had died um, because of, you know, sexual trauma, it just like kind of blew my mind because it's such an extraordinary thing that I don't think is even possible, that I don't even believe could or should happen anywhere. And so this sparked something in me, and I knew that this is coming in the Stargate because this morning I had this dream about how the storm is about to begin. And when we think about the storm, I just think about, you know, a final cleansing of system, systematic pedophiles on the planet. And so that brings us in, into our um, community gathering here today, where we're really talking about the next step because we are the ground crew. We are the light workers on the ground. We're really the ones that are gonna have to deal with how things unfold in the 3D. And for that reason, we should get a say in how it unfolds. And by that, I mean, we are really creating it, okay? And so one thing that our team really wants to share with everyone is that there are a lot of different timelines and, you know, all roads leads to the geyser. <laughs> so um, all of the timelines will eventually lead to humanity living in an ascended heaven on earth planet, right? But I feel that this timeline and how we get there is really important because, first of all, we really do get to play part in the co-creation of that road. And our galactic and angelic team is really saying that we want to create as peaceful of a timeline as possible. And so just as we're saying that, our physical vessels and our subconscious has been seeded with a lot of normalization of violence and drama. And so if we're not completely clear, meaning if we're not meditating for a couple hours a day, ensuring that we're anchored and balancing our body, we could be expressing these subconscious and programmed vibrations in our body. And so this makes it easier for us to slide and create realities where there is more chaos and violence in the external reality. And that's not to blame anyone. It's just saying that we have the power to create peace and it takes more
effort. It takes more practice. It takes more mastery. But that is actually what we're here to experience. So let's give an example. Um, a few months ago, there was a timeline that came in to the Stargate. And those of you that follow my work know that I went into 10 Days of Darkness um, where I just meditated and went upstairs for meetings. And the timeline that came in was interesting because it said that there would be this major disruption to societal life, that there would be major power outages, and that um, they might take over the news system where they just play you know, the most horrendous disclosure out at all of the people in the world. And for some reason, these people thought it was a good idea. And I saw this timeline come in, the story, because this person has a large following. And so there was a lot of people that was getting fed this information, like tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of people. Okay. And so when this timeline came in, it just sounded ridiculous to me because there was no afterthought of what would happen after that. Um, meaning it's difficult enough to see that one child somewhere has been harmed to the point they died. And even as somebody that has worked through so much of my triggers, it still really deeply affected me. And so I can't even imagine the amount of chaos and emotional distress humanity would go into if this timeline were to happen, especially because I'm not seeing that all of our light workers are solid and online. All of our light workers are, you know, solid with our finances and with our resources and with our psychic abilities online. You know, are we really ready to handle that timeline? And of course, I am not the one that makes decisions <laughs> at all. I simply become aware of these things and I watch our collective and also the councils make decisions. And it was almost a unanimous decision that we actually prefer a timeline of peace and there's actually no urgency. You know, we have these generations to transform this situation on earth. And I'm gonna explain what it is that is happening on earth, <laughs> what we're all doing here. Um, and just as a um, final note on that, before we shift into the first workshop for the day, <clears throat> um, yeah, that in Taoism, there's an understanding that there's microcosms and macrocosms and there are ancient Egyptian proverbs that say, as within, so without, as above, so below. And this is actually legitimately physics of reality and of consciousness itself. And so as we go through this workshop today, I'm going to probably repeat this a few times, that the more peace that we can cultivate inside of our own bodies, the easier this transition is going to be for everyone, which means the easier it's going to be for you to hold space for the whole planet. I mean, it's already like being a healer slash supporter of planetary transition is already a big job. We don't need to add drama on top of it. We really don't need to do that. And the reason why we want to put drama on top of it is probably because we're not really doing our work to the extent that we really should be, meaning that we're not doing it in the levels that we should be. And so we're parts of us are maybe bored. And so we're like, oh, let's make this more dramatic. But really... You know, this could be full of love. This is, could be fun. This could be very peaceful. As long as we remember how powerful we are, that our consciousness inside of our vessel is directly connected to the fabric of reality itself. And that if we can cultivate more peace, more joy, more fun, more maturity, more mastery in our own bodies, then that will be what we choose collectively. Um, and so... With that being said, then it's no longer this external game that we're playing. Like, yes, we make moves in the external, but these energies are sourced from within. And so instead of feeling like there's this battle we have to wage um, and feeling like, you know, there's going to be a winner and I'm such a hero, you know, all of these 
kind of dramatic and theatrical feelings. Um, I think that we're just learning to upgrade and evolve and mature out of certain frequencies and recognizing just how brilliant it is of an opportunity to even be here at this time. Um, so um, we're going to go into the opening for our workshops and everything I'm saying is going to make a lot more sense. <laughs> so hello to everybody in the live chat. Um, thank you for showing up and being here. I'm so happy and joyful to be radiating this energy from my beautiful home in New Mexico. So I'd love for you to just slide in the chat and let me know where you are so we can create our energy map and prepare to lift off in our light show here. So this is a introduction to the three-day workshops that we're having um, this weekend. And I've decided to name it Dumbledore's Army because it's funny and I grew up watching Harry Potter and I just think it's great. And of course, for those of you who um, watch Harry Potter, you know that Dumbledore's Army is an army that was formed by students of all of these um, students inside this magic school when they had to come together to fight the dark side. <laughs> and Dumbledore is the name of a great wizard. And so um, they all came together, all of the students in the magic school, to form this army. And they fought against the dark forces. And so I just thought this was a cute thing because clearly um, we need to bring some light into the more crazy things that we're going to explore today. So I just want to start this discussion with the story of the universe. <laughs> and I really have to start here because it'll give us the understanding that there's actually nothing to fight, that we've actually already won, and it's going to give you the physics of why that's true. So as we're talking about the microcosms and the macrocosms, the way I'm going to tell this story is on the universal level, but it could be very well understood in any dimensional levels as well. So in the very, very, very beginning, there was a androgynous universe. And this androgynous universe was full of love and divinity and creativity. It was just this brilliant, beautiful place. And one day it decided that it wanted to explore polarity, meaning it wanted to split itself into the masculine and the feminine energies. And so it created out of itself a feminine universe, predominantly of feminine energy, and a masculine universe, predominantly of masculine energy. And so this game played out for a long, long, long time. At a certain point, the creation decided that it had learned enough from its experiences and it called for a re-merging of the two universes. So when the two universes came back in to collide, the collision as the two universes came back in to come into union created some levels of conflict and drama, especially as the feminine and the masculine did not really understand how to coexist anymore. And so certain traits of one would override or become um, incongruent with traits of the other. And so it wasn't that you know, one was bad or one meant to be uh, violent. It's just that those traits, because they had um, gone to the end <laughs> of the exploration of that energy, as it was coming back into union, um, that was difficult and the, that energy became conflict. And so some would say that also when this was happening because there was conflict that other energies were able to come in and by other energies I just mean like the AI that don't belong in this universe. And so as the universes came back into the one universe and it is now going through this emerging process, there was conflict and by that, I mean, there were energies where um, 
the masculine energies of force and action became dominating to the feminine energy. And so this colliding then created all of this drama that was actually also both of these universes resolving and completing their lessons as well. So I'm hoping this is making sense. So as this universe is coming into the completion of that learning, um, it realized that there was still a lot of things that needed to resolve in this universe, but the universe was ready to evolve into the next evolution of itself. It was getting ready to play the next game. And so all of the evolved angelic beings from all over the universe came up with this plan to resolve as much of the drama and craziness in the universe as possible. And that includes all the galactic wars and the AI infestations. They sent the best souls um, and they chose the most brilliant planet, the earth, to be a container for the resolution and healing of fragments of the entire universe. Okay. So why that's important is because it pulls us out of duality and into this um, non-dual place where we realize that literally everyone on this planet right now is playing a role, literally. A role that has been sanctioned by the heavens to resol resolve all drama and distortion and trauma in the whole universe. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. <laughs> And it's so incredible to be a part of it. Right? We're literally watching ourselves, the universe, in a human body, perceiving the evolution of ourself in the macrocosm as the microcosm. Incredible. Right? There is no such experience in the whole universe, and that is why we're here. So amazing. Right? So if you think of that, not even those people who shall not be named. <laughs> I just don't want to get this video blocked by the bots of YouTube. <laughs> so even those people that we know have been spiritually sacrificing babies, it's possible that they are also playing a role and that even on some level they are um, in a higher dimensional level, they are chosen to play that role based on their previous experiences and everything as well. And so the reason why that's so important is that it, it takes us out of this um, evil versus good perspective where like, we're like, oh, those people are bad and we're the good people because we're actually literally all working together because this experience on a universal level is just so magnificent and important it's, it's just so beyond that a little fighting thing so that brings us then to our journey now of remembering you know who we were when we chose to embark on this journey to represent the universe and our galactic um, lineage in whatever healing and transformation and resolution that needs to happen. What a great honor. And so this is actually really our journey. Each one of our journeys is so unique and incredibly important in the oneness of the universe. Because again, we're all, those of you who are tuning into this video right now, we understand that we have come to Earth for a very specific reason. We are probably a being that came from a different dimension, a different time space, a different planet, or a different galaxy. And we each are carrying our lineages and memories and information that we've come to play part in this resolution. And so our process of remembering ourselves is actually the first step. And our process of remembering ourselves and embodying is a process that requires us to create space in our life to fully engage in it because it's not going to happen by itself. Okay? It's not going to happen if we just continue to go to our 3D job and eat McDonald's and 
watch TV and hope that one day that our soul is just going to walk into our body. And so if you're somebody who's just like, I know I'm a star seed, but I don't really know where I'm from. Um, and you're not spending time focused on pulling yourself into your body. And I'm going to tell you the ways that we can do this. Um, then this is what we need to focus on. Okay. So in the beginning of my journey, I became obsessed by this. This was like my number one thing. Like there was nothing in the world that mattered more than just me coming into my body. And so I think that in this way, I was very lucky because my path allowed me to not have to, well, first of all, it didn't really give me a choice. <laughs> it didn't really give me a choice um, in choosing to embody or stay in the false matrix because it literally just yanked me out of false matrix and did not allow me to go back. <laughs> so I was forced to literally jump into this quantum reality and figure out how to embody. That was like my thing. And um, this entire story is chronicled in my book, I Am Starseed, that you can find on Amazon. But it took seven years of intense levels of self-healing, you know, hundreds of ceremonies and hundreds of thousands of hours of just going into figuring out where my traumas are, where my fragments are, how do I shift the density of my body to be high vibrational enough for my soul to actually be inside of it so I can actually remember, you know, where I'm from and what I can do and what I'm capable of? So our journey of mastery and wholeness is the first step of our mission. And if we don't know what our mission is, then that is our mission. Coming into wholeness and embodiment of ourselves and remembering who we are is our mission. And if we don't even know where to start, then our multidimensional inner healing is uh, where we start. <laughs> so I'm starting this 13 month container where I'm basically radiating these codes of integration um, starting in November. And this is something that the Galactics have asked me to create. So it's a space where basically if you're focused for this year of being with me, you're going to be able to pull a lot of your soul into your body because I'm going to be holding that space and just bouncing back at you. Um, you know, if you ever start feeling like you're crazy or you're unsure about what's happening with you, the space is going to radiate and share this frequency of groundedness integration so that you can have that support as you're going through your uh, quantum leap. So if you feel like 2021 is the year where you're jumping from the false matrix into a quantum reality, then this container is created for you. And it's also created for those of us that know that we're supposed to be a healer or someone that supports humanity in our healing at this time. And this is a very complex, multifaceted um, job. <laughs> and so... It's why I call my work advanced light work because it's no longer just saying, oh, wow, I have energy in my hand and I can transfer energy and Reiki is great and, and I'm just going to lay my hands on this person or I'm just going to give them a hug. And while that's really fantastic, it's really great and important to do every single day, we are capable of so much more. And in order for us to truly support humanity in healing multidimensional planetary enslavement, we're going to have to figure out, um, you know, the different dimensions of how people have suffered and how we can set people free and how, how we can guide people to, again, liberate themselves and move into their true self. And so we're talking about galactic shamanism. What is the starseed shaman, right? What is even a shaman? A shaman is a being who connects with other realities and dimensions and spirits to assist in both our own and others' healing and spiritual growth. This is the basic definition of a shaman. Okay? And I know that there's a lot of people that get triggered by this word, but my entire journey, I've just had hundreds of dreams and synchronicities that spirit really just wants me to claim this word. And so I'm not going to fight with the universe on that. <laughs> And I find that usually the people that have a real hard problem with using the word shaman 
are people that have no connection to shamanism at all or don't even know what it is. They just want to find something to argue about. So if you are here to be a channel slash oracle slash multidimensional healer to support humanity, you are on the path of a shaman. And in fact, humanity is on this path of remembering that we are a shamanic species. Okay? So nobody owns this work. We need to allow ourselves to connect multidimensionally because that is more important than anything on the earth right now. So if a shaman is somebody that communicates with spirits in other realms for healing and spiritual growth, then a galactic shaman would be a person that connects with galactic realms and beings and frequencies for, again, healing and spiritual growth. So oftentimes, these are actually other dimensional aspects of ourself. And here I'll just slide in real quick this message about channeling. So I am born in the 90s. I was born in 1994. And this is a year that the Earth and the solar system actually moved into the photon belt. And so my generation, the starseeds are born in 93, 94, 95. This is a cluster of very special, unique um, beings that have access to realms of energy that previous generations did not have. And another reason why we have access is that actually the previous generations did such a great job at lifting up the vibration of the earth and the collective that we're actually able to come in. And so before you know we are embodied, channeling was really important because it allowed us access to these higher dimensional energies that otherwise wouldn't be able to reach the earth. But at a certain point, the frequency of our collective consciousness raised to an extent that we can now begin to embody those frequencies. And a lot of these beings that we're channeling are actually star seeds that are on earth now. So me, myself, I've never channeled, but I understand that things that I'm saying and the frequencies and this knowledge of the universe come from my own soul. And so you can say that, you know, it's kind of channeling in a way but this is embodiment. We are now embodying these wise um, and knowledgeable frequencies of our galactic self in our conscious physical body. And we're able to allow that conscious energy to move ourselves. And as we then um, create these ripples of energy in the field. So the galactic shaman is somebody who is seeking wholeness to become the healed healer, okay? Who knows that our inner healing is our map and foremost guide. Because our missions, our missions are written in our path, in our genetics. And the things that have traumatized us, the things that happened that really um, were misfortunes or felt so difficult or created a lot of suffering, um, these experiences help us connect with humanity. Okay. And whew. so we're speaking on self leadership. So the galactic shaman or the star seated shaman is a being that has to be self led because there simply is not an education system that is suited for you because there are not beings on earth that have the skills that you do. So, in my um, spiritual initiations path of becoming a shaman, um, it began when one day in Costa Rica when this green goddess came and said, You're becoming a shaman. And this is why I don't contest this word is because these goddesses are coming to say to me, I sure don't know better than these beings. So if this is the way that the universe is moving me, I am just going to humble myself and be an expression for whatever energy that desires to come through that is helpful for everyone. So I had a ayahuasca teacher. And um, just as a side note here, my birth name actually means fragrant medicinal tea. I have an extraordinary connection <clears throat> with ayahuasca, the medicine. Not that I take it anymore. 
but just that I feel we have a connected oversoul and that we operate and have healing powers in a similar way. <coughs> so when I first was initiated into um, the shamanic path, the first teacher that I had was an ayahuasca uh, medicine man. And for a while, I thought that I was going to be serving ayahuasca. And when I met this man, he was so expressive and beautiful in so many ways that I adored him. So he, told, he called me one day and said that he had taken four cups of medicine. And in his you know, peak of his visions, he saw this teepee. And when he went into it, he saw me. And he saw that I was, the words that he said was that he... That it looked like I had been around a uh, neighborhood a few times or something. And that um, I was serving medicine to people in a TV. And so this led him into inviting me to be his student. Now, that relationship only lasted a little while because I would get these downloads, you know, of my aliens that are like, you're becoming a, a galactic shaman. And I would go to my teacher and I would say, my guys came in and said that I'm becoming a galactic shaman. And I mean, these were energies that were very pure. I was just excited that finally it was aligning to my path and I was going to be able to be of service. It was very innocent. But he just had no idea, you know, how to handle what was coming through me. And I would start asking him about these entities I was seeing and these distortions in people I was seeing and these underground cross um, cross ley lines that carried trauma and that were a part of the mind control system. And he just had no idea what I was talking about. And so eventually I realized that the shamanic world on earth, um, because what has happened on earth is very magical, meaning a lot of black magic has been placed on humanity. So the multidimensional energy realms of the earth, mainly the lower astral realms, they're very messy, okay? And a lot of the indigenous shamans, they're connecting into the fourth, the astral realm. And so, you know, long before the AI and the satanic stuff were happening, the astral realm was very different. So because, you know, the level of satanic ritual abuse and AI interference, these things are relatively new, um, a lot of these indigenous healers, they just didn't know how to engage with these energies or even how to perceive them. And this is the role of the starseed, right? We're coming in with new frequencies and new levels of perception so that um, when you learn to perceive these things, you'll find that you actually carry the antidote for them. You are actually the technician that's here to take some of those things apart and to dissolve them. And so I feel that um, we put in place a lot of fail safes, meaning a lot of our psychic abilities cannot fully come online until a certain level of self-healing has completed. Because you see it time and time and again in the older shamanic world where you know somebody has access to great shamanic power, but then their solar plexus is not healed, and so they go and start using that power in a bad way. And there's just no way that your ascended soul is gonna allow that to happen to yourself. <laughs> so um, we really have to work with the energies of, of humility and self-honesty because, because we don't have teachers, we can't have somebody that truly, you know, let's say like keep us in line because we're moving out of that system of being told by somebody else if you're doing good or not. So that means you have to really keep track of yourself, right? And because there's not really a lot of um, shamanic practitioners and teachers that are fully connected to these frequencies, it's really hard to get the training and the space to explore those things. And so self-honesty is really important. And this is something that we cultivate is that when we go in to do our self-healing, we create enough space in our consciousness to be truly honest with ourselves. How much self-healing have we really done? How good do we really feel in our body on a day-to-day -day basis? How empowered do we feel? 
how rich or impoverished, uh, impoverished um, or stable or grounded or emotionally whole do we feel? And, you know, creating enough space in ourselves to actually be okay. Um, and a lot of that comes with the inner child work because it's really our inner children that feel like they have to prove themselves in some way or have to be a certain level of good enough, right? And so here we then realize that our inner work is a map. Our inner work is the process for us to create our own library of healing tools. Because remember, in the beginning of the story, my job title is really self-healing guide. Okay? And self-healing guide means that I am, first of all, a shining light of what being healed could look like. And I'm going to tell a few more stories um, because I think it's important. I feel like when people look at me, they're like, oh, she's really lucky. You know, she's just her aliens talk to her. She's always had like she didn't have any trouble connecting with them. You know, like I it can't be that easy for me because whatever reason. And the truth is <clears throat> that when I first woke up, you know, this body, I had an eating disorder for two years that I nearly, I actually kind of did commit suicide, but it was like a bad suicide attempt in high school. And then I nearly overdosed one time when I was in my early 20s, and actually this pleading beam ship actually had to come in and resuscitate my body. <laughs> and then um, I was drugged and raped by these two people in the festival world when I was just waking up. And I have been abducted by reptilians who also did a bunch of really weird things to me. Um, I spend a lot of time in the lower astral realm just like looking for fragments of children that need to find their way home. And so this journey has not been without its traumas. And of course, just most recently, um, just this year, I facilitated a master soul's entrance into this world for nine days. And of course, my human self experienced the loss of a newborn baby. And I feel like this has happened this year, really because, like, I'm not here to pretend to be anything. I'm really not here to, you know, become a movie star <laughs> or to take all of your money or to, you know, live in a fancy house. Like, I'm legitimately on the earth here on a mission with all of you. And one of the things I was just really feeling like, you know, even last night, I was having a really hard time, you know, just crying and, you know, screaming at the galactics, like, you know, screw all of you. Like, I don't, you know, how, how could you do this to me? How could you guys think that, like, I would recover from this, you know? <laughs> and, but I am, and I'm here. And it's because I am completely committed and devoted to my mission on earth. And right now that is being here with all of you and creating the space for us all to walk into our body because, you know, the main energy that helped me survive the past four months has been that every time I'm on the floor rolling around in just the greatest amount of misery you could ever imagine, my baby would be flying around the room and she would be like, we have a job to do. <laughs> I'm going to let you roll on the ground for a week and then we got to get back into the office. And actually, I said that a week was not enough because these beings really don't understand what being a physical body is like. So they're like, oh yeah, she'll cry for a week and then she'll get back on her feet. But um, it took me about, you know, a month or two. And every time I would just say, I'm done, I'm going to die. I can't do this anymore. I can't believe you guys put me up and didn't even give me any clues that this was going to happen. I, I have to die. And when I would express that energy, eventually I would calm down. I would calm down enough 
to realize that I actually did want to stay and I did want to live and that the one purpose I have in my life is to complete this mission to hold space for the universe to evolve that there was actually no place so, um, all that is to say that all this is to say that it has not been the easiest of paths for me either I have slept on the side of the highway for days on end and ultimately the thing that continued to guide my heart was just my pure devotion and intention to liberate humanity from this perceived monster and uh, catapult the whole universe into a different stage of its own expression. That's like the most exciting thing ever. So, a starseed shaman is somebody that has fully integrated themselves into the physical body, meaning that, you know, we're no longer looking on Google about star seeds. You know, what kind of star seed am I? Am I a star seed? And not only are we integrated in, in that, you know, the normal state of being, like as we're walking through life, like it's the most normal part of ourselves to be a star seed, to be from someone, somewhere, to be from somewhere, have, you know, different skills than what most people have and have a different level of perception than most people have that we're no longer doubting and questioning that, but actually is fully integrated. So, I wanna move into um, the different levels of human, because this is what it takes to be a shaman at this time. It's not that, you know, you have one healing skill and you can emit one frequency or you can handle, you know, one specific thing. Like, we're creating a new medical paradigm. And this new medical paradigm is that health is holistic. That we're no longer splicing up different parts of the body. Like, oh, I have an emotional illness. Like, oh, I have liver cancer. Oh, I have, you know, a mind distortion. We realize that actually one part resonates and connects with all other parts and that when we have something in our liver is actually maybe caused by something in our shoulder that's maybe pulling on our hip that's ultimately caused by a thought right so there's so many levels to true healing that if you want to learn how to cure or to heal for real you will have to open access to all these levels and so being a healer to this level means that we have to be really fluid and adaptable and that it's like treating every now moment and every client as this new exploration of constant communication between yourself, your client's body, and the great spirit so that you're constantly moving through the different layers without any preconceived um, idea of what it is. And this is like the opposite of traditional medicine, right? <laughs> Where you're like, oh, uh, I see your liver's enzymes are low. You, you must have this, like take this thing. And it's like, totally freeing and completely um, in the opposite direction of that. Um, and this begins with, again, the integration that we are multidimensional beings. We're shifting from just knowing these things, like, oh yeah, I know that we're multidimensional, I know that we have energy, to fully deeply feeling that and experiencing that every moment to the point that is normal. So meaning that is applied. Like, if we know that everything is energy and we begin to have a cold, is the first thing that we do to go in and meditate to figure out, you know, where the weakness in our immune system is? Or do we immediately go to the Benadryl and go to the clinic for pharmaceuticals, right? This is like a moment to moment. Every decision that we're making, every ex moment of experience that we have reflects back to us the level of integration that we're in. And this is good because, again, we're just being aware of where we're at. There's no judgment of whether it's good or bad. It's just being aware of the level we're at and knowing where we want to be and consistently shifting us towards that level of integration. And so I say that our inner healing is a map because we are all existing in 
the false matrix, or we have all existed inside of it to a certain extent. I went to public school and ate factory farm food until I was almost 20, you know, when I was living, actually maybe 16, when I was living with my family. And so we all took part in these things that when we wake up, we realize we're actually highly, high levels of black magic. <laughs> and let's go into this. Because the first chapter of our school together talks about the earth self. And this is the really the most important part because this is what all humans have gone through. And we all submerged ourselves into the false matrix so we can experience and sample these viruses with our own system and so that our own getting over them, our own healing of them, is gonna help us support humanity, heal from them as well. And so having a multidimensional understanding of all of those things is really important. And all of these things are things that I have perceived with my own consciousness and eyeballs as my higher dimensional self in my body. And so this is what I'm transmitting to you. So for example, um, oh, I just really don't like to talk about this. <laughs> oh, okay. Just really not fun. So one example is, let's say the example of factory farm foods. Um, these animals were beaten and tortured, you know, and then their meat is basically being eaten. And so if we think about eating as an exchange of energy with the reality, which is really what it is, okay? So if we choose to put that energy in our body, we're basically saying we accept this energy. We accept the torture and abuse of living beings. I'm not saying that everybody needs to be a vegan. That is not what I'm saying at all because I don't believe that that is what's natural either for all people, okay? What I'm saying is that factory farms and the abuse of living beings, that is actually quite a distortion. I would even go as far as saying that is satanic. So then we get into this word satanic. To me, the word satanic just means the abuse and complete disrespect of life itself. And if we recognize that life is actually creation, life force is consciousness, is what is creating all of life, is penetrating through the universe, is this beautiful, magnific magnificent force of creation, aliveness, energy, like that's what life is. Then we would say that an energy that wants to abuse and destroy and own and distort and disrespect that sacred life energy, any energy that disrespects life is definition of satanic. And so then here we realize that satanic is actually a wide spectrum of one thing. Okay? The fact that a lot of us live on this planet with no respect for life itself, we could say that that is the satanic culture having permeated into our body. And this is very multidimensional because when we reject life or when we in, are in disrespect of it, we actually then are telling the reality that we don't care for that part of ourself and thus, we're allowing for parasitic forces to take that. And this is the basis of the control system on Earth. This is why that, you know, on the watered down scale is the level of satanic energy that the masses are experiencing. But what is the most satanic thing ever? Of course, rape of women and children. Okay? What is that even? A woman is a being who brings through new life. In our culture, in human existence, women are the symbol of the perpetuation of life itself. And for us to exist in a society that disrespects women and have a large number of sexual abuse and rape, this is 
a sign that our society is sick. It is a, a sign that satanic culture has permeated our reality. Okay. And so now we want to think about how circumcision is so widely accepted in the world, in our modern Western society, when the practice has no medical benefits and comes originates from a religious ritual from a different continent. And when we think about how the male sexual anatomy is actually more vulnerable than the female sexual anatomy where everything is inside the body, the male anatomy is hanging outside of the body, meaning that, you know, they say that in, in Taoist um, energy studies, the tip of the penis is actually connected to the heart chakra. Okay? And so our men, we're supposed to have men who are proud to express and show their love, who are open to express their love, right? This is how the anatomy actually expresses these energies. But then we see that our society is basically cutting that connection to the heart, to the emotions, and taking away that sense of protection because that part is literally um, protecting the most vulnerable part of the man. So all of these things have multidimensional repercussions that even though we don't think about them, at some point they were consciously created as part of the prison system of earth. And our way, our only way to break out of that is vibrationally because it's a vibrational prison, right? And it works by traumatizing and removing our awareness of ourself removing our knowledge of how we are creative beings and how creative energy flow through our bodies and removes our sense of that creatorhood in ourselves, and compounds piles of really gnarly trauma energy inside of us. And trauma, it's so multifaceted. So let's do an example. Say, when we were conceived, our parents were encouraged by the society to make a baby because it would be financially stable for them to do so. Meaning maybe they got a house, or maybe they get a bonus, or maybe they get child care. I know in Canada, you can get money for making a baby. So... Say that actually the intention for that, for you to exist, was that. And then compounded by that, your mom was really stressed out when she was pregnant with you. And so she was always afraid that there was not going to be enough money. And fast forward, when this baby was being born, the mom's body was in the wrong position. And so obviously the baby wasn't sliding out. And so the doctor was plunging the baby out of the mom. And so then fast forward, the, the baby is fed formula, which is basically high fructose corn syrup. And then it goes to school and, you know, just feels like there's a disconnection and was not able to make friends. So you see how all of these different experiences of trauma compound on each other. And the places where those energies intersect become places of um, disease. So healing is a very multidimensional and individual and fluid process. So the way that I operate and do sessions now is that I literally just look at the person's energy body. And I'm basically able to just pinpoint layer by layer. I just ask the body to show me where the first thing is. And I say, okay, the pain point is here. And here are the intersections of trauma that are stored here. And that'll lead me to the next place or maybe there's a tra traumatic memory or maybe a past life. And then layer by layer by layer, we go through the ancestrals and different distortions, meaning that we address all the things that, that are lodged in the multidimensional body. And I believe that this is what a doctor 
<laughs> is or should be, right? Or at least, you know, one kind of doctor that analyzes what is actually creating disease in people. And I believe that this is a skill that we all have. I don't think that, that I'm special at all. I just have literally been doing this work on myself obsessively <laughs> for nearly a decade. And that's why I'm getting so good at it. You know, a lot of my clients are just like, wow, how can you see all this? I'm like, I literally am doing this on myself like all day, every day. <laughs> and it's just taking so long to heal everything. Because think about all of the trauma that our ancestors have gone through. Think of all the galactic wars, you know, the AI distortions, like these nasty things that these beings conjured up. I'm just like, how did you even think of that? Like, who? Anyway. So... <laughs> All of these different dimensions of healing that need to be addressed need to be taught to humanity to shift the medical paradigm. I believe that the medical paradigm is one of the anchors of the satanic reality on earth because people give away the power of their life to these people that are supposed to know how to take care and heal them, but really... Um, just cover up the symptoms. And so the starseed shaman is someone who goes in to discover all these levels of our self because we realize that all humans, we're all mammal, soft, conscious, living beings that have gone through the false matrix. And so really we have a lot of congruent traumas right? The trauma of separation, the trauma of confusion, being like, where the heck am I? You know, trauma of being told that, you know, it's normal to not know who you are. It's normal to not have your soul intact. It's normal to have parts of your soul fragmented, right? These are things that we have all experienced and we share with humanity. And when we discover how to transform those traumas into power and how to move through those traumas with grace. We are walking the path of the starseed shaman. And that has, again, so much to do with our ability to be completely honest with ourselves in every moment. If you're on the floor rolling around in pain and you don't have the strength to get up and heal yourself, that's okay. Just be aware that that's what's happening in that moment and be okay with that and accept that. But also be aware, always be aware of where the self is at and how we're responding and how we're moving through moment to moment to moment. And the way we cultivate grace is by creating space. Creating space between our sense of self, our point of awareness and our human experience, which could be joy, which could be excitement, which could be pain, could be sickness. You know, whatever it is, creating space between that and our essence self gives us the space to be graceful, if that makes sense. So some of the other things that are going to be transmitted is how... TV programming affects consciousness. So basically, this course is not really me teaching anything. It's me actually psychically transferring my files. <laughs> so I just come to discover that there's all of these distortions in the human body that we've never encountered before, in, before TVs were a thing, <laughs> right? And a lot of these frequencies were discovered when the CIA was doing consciousness experimentation on humans in it, as early as the 90s. And they were doing crazy things to figure out how they can trap consciousness, dislodge consciousness, fragment consciousness. All of these things are, I'm pretty sure, like open source files you can go find on the CIA's website, right? Not a secret. But we need to realize that they did decades of this research, and then they applied that research to frequencies that literally fragment and distort human consciousness. 
And this is, again, a multidimensional thing because the frequency comes through our consciousness, but then because our body is the expression or the hologram of our consciousness, the energies can express themselves in the rest of our body. So, for example, it comes back to the sexuality, like all of this distorted image of sexuality that we see in the music videos, right? We just grew, I mean, I grew up having those images of sexuality just displayed into my face. And so obviously the body learns through mirroring and we see and actually that inserts into our energy body. And so that immediately actually takes away our ability to express our sexual energy authentically. And so then that's a huge reason why a lot of us have a hard time creating things, making abundance, getting to doing what we're here to do because our sexual energy is locked up in those fragmentation locking mechanisms that we were induced through mind control. Somebody says that being abducted into MK Ultra, astral abduction is something that happens a lot more than people think. Um, and that's another thing. It's like all of these things are just frequencies that once you tune into the frequency, you're going to be able to pick it up a lot easier. And so that is why I've created this galactic shamanism container so that every week I can psychically transfer one file, focusing on one file to you, so that by the end, you can operate multidimensionally as an actual healer, somebody that actually knows what they're doing, who can perceive energy multidimensionally instead of just like swirls, and instead of just transferring energy, actually, you know, become a psychic surgeon, and you actually know what you're doing. And also, maybe even more importantly, that this container, because of the frequency of integration, you're going to be able to connect, finally remember that you have, that, you know, maybe take much longer outside of this space to acquire. And so, yeah, I'm just communicating and um, letting you know that this is what is available. And if you feel like this is right for you, um, there's a link in the bottom. Um, what I'm talking about today is mostly the first three, four months of the container where we're going through, you know, the most difficult stuff to heal are the sexual trauma because this is like the essential part of ourself, right? The part that speaks to are we a creator or are we a slave? And this is a, a large spectrum from being a slave to being a creator. This is just like the journey that everybody is on. So that's why it always comes back to the sexual healing. And obviously, if, you know, being, this is what I say. A lot of people say, well, you know, I've never been physically raped or anything. Well, I say, if you have been forced to put your creative energy somewhere where you didn't want to, like, you felt like you hated going to school, but you had to, or you have to work in this cubicle and give this energy, you know, your creative life essence, you, had, you just felt forced to give that energy against your will, then invariably that is literally a kind of rape. And I just need to say it in that clear cut way because it helps us realize that all of humanity is going to need to move through that level of healing. And so for us to move through these levels of our own healing first is essential, especially if we want to create a timeline of op optimal peace, especially if we want disclosure to fully come, because the light workers, we need to all be ready to hold space optimally, okay, to have all of our skills and vision and sight and aspects online so that when disclosure fully happens and our neighbors having a, you know, a crazy meltdown, we know what to do. We know how to move the energy. We know how to access the different frequencies. You know, this is a really important part that 
we forget sometimes and we're like, oh, I wish these external people could just do something about that external thing that I don't like. And now it's like, oh, wait, I'm a part of this. I need to sort myself out and get grounded, activate myself so that when that disclosure happens, I'm ready. And just as a side note, like a final thing, I want to talk about money because money is something that is greatly misunderstood and wrongfully hated in our community. So the first thing is, I'm offering this container for not even $90 a month. And it's kind of a joke because um, I've seen my colleagues charge, you know, $400, $500 a month for something like this. And I'm charging this because I know that energy exchange is needed, but I always want it to be accessible by my people. And the information that I'm sharing is really priceless. I mean, this is my life force. Like these are things that I have integrated that took seven whole years of really hard work that I'm now just sharing with you freely. I'm literally just saying, here's everything that I have found and here it is. And the reason why I need to charge for it instead of just giving it out for free is because I need to create an energetic container to actually hold the space for everyone to have this in safety. So I'm just gonna put the link here because I think people are saying they can't find it. It was earthstar.tk slash mentorship. So I wanna talk about money because this is part of the integration thing, okay? We always think we're infinite creator beings infinite creator beings, but then we don't have money to buy food. And it's like this incongruence, right? We realize that there's a conflict of realities. How can we be an infinite creator being, but unable to create a space of safety, the tools that we need, the, the nourishment that we need to be healthy. And so Correcting our sexual energy is actually the key to correcting our relationship with energy. And to be fully honest with you guys, um, like this course is not, was not created to fuel my life. Meaning that the money that I'm actually making from this course, I'm putting right into creating the sanctuary for you. <laughs> and I have at this point created enough things to sustain myself financially, and I'm not really motivated to do this. But I want, what I more than anything is want for us all to be millionaires, <laughs> right? And it's because we're infinite creator beings and we can transform that infinite creation energy into money if we have mastered energy alchemy. And this is really my favorite space of exploration is knowing that these bodies are actually vessels for creation. These teachings come right through my Taoist ancestors. These women who mastered the art of channeling cosmic creation energy to create reality as they will. Otherwise known as giving birth to the reality. And so this is ancient cosmic knowledge, again, showing us that integration is everything. And that if we cognitively understand that we are divine creator beings, <laughs> then we can create infinite energy. And when we are motivated by love, we can trust ourselves. This is again where that self-honesty comes in. A lot of us were like, oh, I don't know if I want to be rich because I don't want to, you know, turn into an evil person. And it's like, if you're integrated and you're your own soul in your body and you know you would never do that, then you would not have that doubt. And then you would be able to freely create all of that energy. And so again, this process, and um, for those of you who are like, 
I want to learn how to do that. I have free, this, this information is available for free on my YouTube channel. Um, because I believe that all humans should have access to this knowledge of how our physical vessel functions as a creational machine. <laughs> we literally funnel cosmic creative energy and give birth of things through our love and our divine inspiration. And so if you want to find out information about that, it's on my YouTube channel. I think the videos are creation and sexuality or sexuality and creation and the mechanics of creation through sexuality. Those are the two main workshops. And again, free workshops are easy, right? But this is not the same as just like learning in school because this is actually stuff you have to vibrationally ingest and digest and integrate and become. <laughs> so, are we clear multidimensional AI coded to our DNA? So I would love to understand more than um, what do you mean by coded into our DNA? Like how do you feel like that happened and what do you mean by DNA? So Judith, um, actually the only payment option is month by month. So again, it's $89 per month, which I hope is very accessible. And if it's not accessible, then it just tells me that maybe right now it's not the best time for you to explore these super multidimensional concepts because you need to be in a fairly grounded place. And if you don't even have the money, if you don't even have 90 extra dollars a month, then maybe right now it's best to actually focus on being grounded. Yeah, Alexandra, please post your Etsy shop in the, in the chat. Okay, so we're just about time. And um, I hope that this workshop has been helpful and productive. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, just as a final Q&A here, I will answer a couple. And um, the link to the mentorship is in the description box just for the recordings. Okay. So I feel like it's something that is anchored in a few different places, in a few different dimensions. And so you would have to go in and find all the places that it's attached. And let's see. I feel like it's actually more consciousness space than DNA, even though it's very similar because DNA is literally like how consciousness projects itself into physicality. So when I tune into your energy, it does feel more consciousness based than DNA based. Um, somebody is asking, how is this different from just watching videos on your YouTube? So the information that's in the container is way more organized, right? It's just like, 13 whole months, I think that's like 52, 52 webinars. I, mean, I don't know if I did the math right there. Um, and you would get to be in a private community forum on the back of my own website um, that is not on Facebook or anything. So you would be able to interact with each other and hold space for each other, ask different questions, um, start community discussions about different things that you're experiencing. And actually it's, again, a container. So the easiest way for me to explain what a medicine container is, is basically like being in some sort of medicine ceremony, but for like 13 months. My, my last medicine container was only three months long and 
people were having incredible experiences because um, a constant, like because the space is created in a higher dimension, if you go up there and check it out, it's actually the school. It's actually this place that you can go to. And there's beautiful pyramids with couches and people can hang out and beautiful pools and people can, you know, just hang out and, and there's people like learning how to levitate and stuff, you know, <laughs> just like it's actually a place. And so when you join the space, you're connected into the field and the field is constantly working on activating and helping you and supporting you heal. And so beyond the classes, which I feel is just the physical incarnation, the physical expression of the class, the space itself is actually the most valuable thing because you're just immersed in this frequency that's holding you to a certain alignment. holding you accountable to your integration process because you're literally focused on doing this every week, right? And you have homework and you have recordings that support you. Like, you know, I'm going to put up MP3s of guided meditations and things like this. So there's all these things that will hold space and support you. So if you feel like you're having a hard time connecting, you just play a video, play one of these things, get in the forum to talk to somebody. All of a sudden you're back in the galactic space. And that's really the most valuable thing. So, oh, and also there's only 144 spots. They're very specific that we're calling in 144 people. At this point is more than halfway filled up. And the reason for this is that the, I mean, for me, I'm not comfortable holding space for more than that amount of people at this time of my um, level <laughs> of energy. <laughs> And, and, um, and also that 144 people, we will be holding space for the planet in a major way together. And so just as the last medicine container, we as a collective, we bring in massive amounts of energy for the planet. We are going to be holding timelines, having counsel, learning how to engage with the multidimensional reality and really working with the, I mean, I, I'm a live by a stargate. So it's always good work, always. So we're going to have kind of this collective good work experience. Um, so somebody says, if it seems like I need clearing, do you think a session with you first is needed? Um, I would say if you feel like it, that's fine. Um, but uh, you could also just start and see. And if you're having just a really hard time, like receiving the energy, then get a session. Um, that's fine too. Um, I do such a specific kind of session now that's really, um, oriented towards my modality for a few years. I did sessions that were 90 minutes long and I did hundreds and hundreds of those sessions and it was really exhausting for me. Um, and also just like, I didn't get to connect with people at all because it's like, I was like going to the person's house and doing the plumbing and getting all dirty and then leaving. And I never got to get to know the person. And so now, oh, and also just, you know, the 90 minutes just really wasn't enough. And so now I do three and a half hour ceremonies and they're really intense. You can ask any of the people that have received this session. They're just like, what the? And it's really good because I basically am able to draw. So I have this chart, like a body, and I go through the session and I just, dive through all the layers for like two, two and a half hours. And I draw this whole map of a system and network of all of your blockages and traumas. And of course, some of it is cleared, but some of it needs to be worked on over time because they're in layers and they're woven together. And so I get to have, you know, an hour to just talk to you and get to know you and see how your life is going and, you know, give you, counsel that actually applies to you and your physical life you know a lot of that stuff it takes human connection it's not just like oh a psychic seeing you blah 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 you know I, I really value just being able to connect and so that's why my sessions are different but if you are looking for somebody to just give you an energy shower there's lots of people that can do that and I'm happy to give you a list of people that I really know and trust um, that can help you with those things um yes you will be given exercises to help you integrate you'll be giving so much supportive stuff because i just love making stuff like you know i just got this whole music 
um, making studio. And I basically I'm gonna be able to make frequencies and I just got this Rife frequency technology and I'm gonna be like really going in and creating just like really cool supportive content sound healing, you know, all sorts of cool stuff to support the space because I just love it. <laughs> it's just going to be so fun for me to put all of this frequency into to support your embodiment. So uh, sorry, I can't, <laughs> the computer is really hard for me to look at. <laughs> Okay, these are really small. Okay, here's the link again. www.earthstar.tk slash mentorship. Um, and so if you join and your partner and kids are interested, just play the video in your household. That's fantastic. I would be so honored for you to do that. Um... Uh, the trainings will be on Zoom. Yes, the trainings will be on Zoom. Um, and Kay, I am taking bookings for the healings on my website. You can find the link, earthstar.tk. Um, did I get all the questions? What days? Uh, so the we've decided that the live stream for the classes are going to be Saturday mornings at 10 a.m., Mountain Time USA, but it's not extremely important for you to join every live. And so if that's an inconvenient time for you, watching the recordings is just as good. As long as you are really committed to actually watching the recordings and participating in the forum, and the more that you participate in the forum, the more you're going to get out of it, right? Because um, you're really immersing yourself in our astral school and, you know, having all these people activating ourselves to this level is really exciting and incredible. And I just can't wait for all of the different, you know, um, wanderings and questions that people are going to bring in because 144 directions of curiosity is a extraordinary level of delight. <laughs> so, um, and then if, Somebody's asking if the sessions are usually, I schedule them on Tuesday and Thursdays. That's the schedule that works well for me. So, um, yes, please contact me to ask questions about the mentorship. You can email me at earthstarhealer at gmail.com or you can message me on Facebook at earthstarhealer. I answered... Yes, healing with singing is like the best thing because it's all about acoustics and how these bodies are actually just an entire vibratory box for our sound. And our sound can resonate and reach any dimensional level of our entire body. And so absolutely, there's going to be um, one transmission based on that. And of course, I am going to be singing um, during all the classes intermittently when I feel like it in the beginning and in the breaks and after <laughs> that's going to be a part of it. I think that is all the questions. Melissa, you're 51, born in 1969. Feel like you can learn an entirely new way to heal. Yes. Yes, this is the perfect container for you. <laughs> I would say that this is a container created for people who believe there are um, more dimensional ways to heal and ways to heal, you know, beyond our conventional understanding. And... Um, So is container more for clearing our denser energies or embody more of our galactic shaman? It's definitely both, obviously. So today we talk a lot about the denser energies because the class is broken up into three main sections. And so the free workshop the next couple days is really to explain with, uh, or to transmit just like the frequency of the three different sections so the first section is called it's about cleaning the denser energies because it's impossible 
people to embody our galactic shaman without doing that. And it's in fact actually quite dangerous to um, embark on engaging with multidimensional energy without healing yourself because you're literally, you know, asking for trouble. And that is why we spent a long time dealing with all the different things that we need to look at in ourselves before we enjoy more of the higher dimensional things. But the second and the third and, and the fourth smaller section of the container, they're more entirely about um, galactic shamanism downloads. But again, the moving through of denser energies is important for building your library because we're talking about, you know, if you're somebody that feels like eventually you might have to help people that are healing from satanic ritual abuse, right? You're going to need to have a library of frequencies that you might come into contact with so they don't freak you out and a, a library of antidotes so you actually know how to work uh, when crazy energy is coming. <laughs> okay, so... Emily Grim Grimley, I'm just starting to dive into the multidimensional healing work. There's a lot that I see that I don't understand. Would this help gain clarity around the work and grow into abilities? That is exactly why I have created this container, is that I've literally just spent the last five to seven years going into the weirdest places <laughs> in my consciousness and driving around the whole planet, going into you know, military bases and ancient civilizations and just going into as many places as my consciousness and my soul is guiding me to so that I can create this library. And so, yes, definitely. And I think that as we go into exploring some of them, you're just going to be like, oh, that's what that is. Oh, that's what that is. And maybe you're going to ask one day, I'm gonna be like, I don't even know. Let's look at that together. And this is how we grow our library together. <laughs> All right. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in. I am sending you all of my love and my joy and my humanness. And I am so excited for this journey. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye. Uh, and <laughs> I'll, just <put> <laughs> I'll just put the link down here one more time. And maybe I'll sing a song. <laughs> my, my friend Jeff just walked into the room with a poncho on, and my dog is freaking out because she's like, oh, my God, what is that? <laughs> okay, I'm going to sing a song.
Long deep breath together into our heart. Breathing out to share that love with all of humanity, all of life, all the animals and the water and the plants on this planet. We're getting ready to connect and communicate with the planet and our oneness on such a new level in all of our wholeness and our strength. Our curiosity and our enjoyment. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you again tomorrow. And uh, I will see you then. Bye.